Welcome to the next chapter of As the Story Grows. I'm Brian Patton. Today we welcome Maria from Berlin post hardcore band Future Palace to the podcast. Paradise has been my favorite song and on repeat ever since a Rising Empire premiered the video back in December, and I've been itching to have the band on the podcast ever since. Future Palace just released their sophomore record run last Friday on Rising Empire Records. Maria talks about the scene in Berlin, the secret group chat that led to the band and inspired the name, and releasing music during a pandemic. Run is my favorite album of 2020 so far, and I am so stoked for everyone to get to know Maria and Future Palace. Take me to this paradise. When the uh, video for Paradise uh, hit YouTube and I watched it, uh, when that breakdown hit, my jaw dropped and I was like, well, I oh. have to have this band on the podcast. It was like oh. one of those songs that like you're like, yeah, this is why I still listen to new bands because like it just Aww. fucking ruled. So um, I'm very excited to talk to you here and I've got to listen to the whole new record now. So uh, awesome. Exciting. Nice. Thanks. Um, wow. Big compliment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's rad. Let's just uh, go back. Um, where did you grow up in Germany? Where I grew up? Yeah. Where did you grow up? Uh, we we are all from Berlin. Yeah. So the capital. And um, yeah, we all grew up here. Also, I did. I grew up in like the more south area of Berlin. Okay. It's like almost the border to Brandenburg, which is another city. So little, not that many people down there, actually, even though Berlin is a really, really big city. We have many, mm -hmm. many people living here. And yeah, that's where so far I've always lived and grew up. I'm still here. <laughs> that's awesome. I went to Berlin it was, uh, 11 years ago now. So oh, wow. it's, it's been a minute. Uh, yeah, but I loved it when I was there. It was great. Really? Friend, yeah, friends who live over there. Uh, Did you just come there for a vacation or? So my friends who live over there started a like uh, performance space and coffee shop uh, bar um, Procwork. I don't. Ah, um, uh, I'm not sure if I know. I, it's yeah. kind of sounds familiar. Um, but before they started that, they had like brought a bunch of like their artsy friends over to like put on an art gallery. To, nice. So, so we did. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very cool. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so where are you from? Uh, from the USA or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, from Washington DC, the state too. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, I've only been to Washington, Seattle. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> quite different. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was still beautiful. Yeah. Just being in America for once, it was crazy, different world. Very different. <laughs> but yeah, like it seemed like a movie to me because we watch a lot of American shows here on mm -hmm. TV. There, like we really idolize america i think are we used to like in the 90s early 2000s yeah. i feel like germans all really wanted to be like american as american as possible we have cop copied your bands like backstreet boys and everything yeah. Spice Girls. <laughs> we copied everything and uh it was like going into yeah the real world with them yeah. seeing the houses like oh yeah that's what i saw on tv all the time that actually exists wow yeah. <laughs> Uh, and now you know we're fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really idolized on TV. Let's say it like that. Yeah. Really uh, candy coated. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what got you into music? Um, um, hard question, actually. Well, my mom also did music back then, never professionally or anything, but she used to have a like 12 string guitar at home. And I was randomly playing with that. And then at some point I asked her to teach me how to play guitar when I was 11 and she did it. So that was my first, yeah, not my first interaction with music, but my first private interaction with learning something. Of course you learn music in school and yeah. stuff like that, like the awkward things. 
<laughs> but then, yeah, from that day on, I decided I kind of want to become a musician. Uh, yeah, I started singing as well. I started writing my own songs when I was like 12. And I was like, yeah, let's try this. I'm not sure if I can ever make it work, but it just felt like that's what I was here for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I talked to uh, your label mates uh, in the Oklahoma Kid yesterday. Ah. So they were talking a little bit about the scene in uh, Berlin, but what was your uh, experience with the music scene through like uh, your teenage years? Um, I feel like it's pretty funny. The two other band members of us, so Manuel and Johannes, we have a age gap with about uh, yeah of about 10 years mm -hmm. so we experienced different scenes almost so i feel like they had everything cool they <laughs> saw every cool club that closed down when i was uh, 18 yeah. <laughs> and i saw like really weird things so i didn't experience that much um in my genre like I was a little too young for the entire emo, hardcore metal scene. Yeah. Because when I was um, a teenager, like dubstep and things like that were a big thing. And I think electro started to be more popular here as well, like e even more. Um, so I was mainly chilling with my own friends and made our own music. And um, yeah, so I didn't experience that much, sadly. But Manuel and Johannes met all the cool people. <laughs> That's cool. How did uh, Future Palace get started? Um, we met through a mut mutual friend. Um, that friend used to study with my old guitar player. They studied sound engineering together. And um, yeah, I was there with my old band. We did some songs. And at some point, we wanted to do a feature with this one friend. And um, he was in the band with my two members at that point. So we had two different bands. We always like to call it similar to an affair. Yeah. <laughs> because that's how it felt because we were two, in two different bands got, got to know each other and we noticed how good it works so when we did the feature we already wrote a song together and noticed yeah wow that's uh, a good fit and then we decided to do and start a project later on that's cool before future palace what was your previous band like genre wise was it on the heavier side was it more emo or what <laughs> yeah it was a it was a wild mix it, it was totally not as professional um, I was in there since I was like 14. Huh. I am now almost 25. So yeah, it's been a long time. And um, we did a little mixture of like emo, alternative rock. And we also tried to be a little more progressive, mm -hmm. way more pro progressive than we are with Future Palace now. So I had this one drummer and he always wanted to go even crazier. And he liked <laughs> the, uh, I, I think I pronounced it wrong, but the Dillinger or Diligently Dillinger Escape Plan. Yeah, Dillinger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Dillinger. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, things like that, or the number 12 looks like you, and mm -hmm. things <laughs> like that. They really wanted to go into that direction. And I was like, yeah, let's try to make it a song in the end of the day, still. So people <laughs> listen to it, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, it was a wild, experimental, different band. We tried everything pretty much, but it was a really good working progress for me. Yeah. Yeah. When you guys were forming Future Palace, what was your vision for what it would sound like musically? Like, Mm. Yeah, it was um it wasn't that strict or anything. We had ideas, so the two guys uh, were actually looking for a male singer and <laughs> wanted to go to an even heavier direction. And we started being not heavy at all actually yeah. with our first album. It's not that heavy. Yeah. Hey there, hey there. It's been a long time, but it's time for the goodbye now. Hey there. No, yeah, um, escape really reminds me of like uh, like Paramore and churches and like uh, Paris, like bands like that. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't as intentional. Actually, we started um, we had similar interests in bands, and we listened a lot to Emma Rosa back then, mm -hmm. and then the back back then called Slaves with Johnny Craig and uh, Dance Gave and Dance. Uh, I mean, of course, also a little bit Paramore and Paris. I would say even more Paris than. Paramore, yeah. um, but it was actually mainly the like Slaves and Amarosa old school songs and vibes that really hmm. yeah, gave us a lot of inspiration and then Underworld for, for Manuel, for example, 
and yeah many many different ones but yeah not churches or anything actually uh, hardly any female vocalists to be honest yeah. we just wanted to make it work in our style yeah that's cool that's cool where'd the name of the band come from uh really similar to where we came from as i was talking about the band story we, we yeah. met through a mutual friend and it was like an a fair thing so we couldn't be a band yet <laughs> and then um manuel <laughs> manuel opened up a whatsapp group chat uh called future palace yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh he said yes yeah, so at some point this could be our like project like uh yeah our, our future palace our band but he never we never intended this to be the band name first yeah. and <laughs> yeah it's funny because he was in england back then and he said he saw a lot of palace things like Beckingham Palace yeah. and he's like yeah that's a like cool word and he's like yeah that's this is our future palace whatsapp group and we ended up uh yeah calling ourselves this because we kept thinking about other names but nothing really fit yeah. and uh in the end future palace now has an entire different message and fits perfectly for our song messages which was also nothing we planned but it seemed to sum up at the end yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. what's that message mean to you guys now um, it means similar to our song Paradise, as you said, you, you watched it first. I like to call Paradise our like theme song. Yeah. Um, I think Future Palace is um, the definition or should um, should say you, you have to keep your hopes up, keep your hopes up for the future. We can make it work even with mental illness, even with whatever you go through. We will build this future palace in mm -hmm. the future. And palace is such a beautiful word because it really means it's not going to be nice it's going to be amazing it's going to yeah. be a palace and i think yeah that's what it stands for now that's cool how'd you guys uh get connected with the rising empire um i wasn't the one talking to them it was mainly okay. our drummer um i think back then i uploaded our first music video on my private youtube channel <laughs> Um, <laughs> thanks to the YouTube space, we were able to uh, record a music video there for free in the YouTube studio. Super, super cool. I don't think they still do it because of Corona, but that thing really helped us because we didn't have money at all. Yeah. And we were able to still produce a really okay looking video this way. And I think that's what brought the attention. The YouTube channel combined with the YouTube video, um, because my channel still already had a reach. Uh, from back then when I did YouTube, it had nothing to do with music though. And <laughs> it was hair stuff and so on. And they, they, I think they found us there and then pretty quickly, uh, contacted us. I think they might have also, sp um, spoken to other people, maybe our producer. They heard our name in a few different mouths, if you can say so. And they ended up contacting us actually, which is crazy. Yeah. So thankful that that happened. <laughs> Escape comes out September 2020. That record probably gets waylaid and, and lost because of COVID. Did you mm. guys push that like as far as you felt comfortable or was it always scheduled to come out in September? Uh, oh man, I don't quite remember. <laughs> I think it was planned to be, yeah, I think it was planned to be released earlier, okay. but there was something that made a change. It is almost so far away already. Yeah, yeah. So much happened that I don't remember <laughs> what it was. But yeah, we wanted to release it, I think, in summer and ended up releasing it in September, so late summer. Um, yeah, I don't quite I don't quite remember what was the reason for that. I don't know if it was the pandemic or maybe because a lot of other bands released at that time, so we were trying to make it later. But yeah, everything just delayed so much because of COVID. It was mainly, though, the tour dates that really, yeah. really delayed over and over again. Yeah. 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 Was there... Was there any chat about delaying the record further or just sitting on it or shelving it? Just being like, this is a bad time to put out music because <laughs> you can't tour. You mean, 
Yeah, you mean our alt? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, escape, new... yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think that that was the case because um, nobody knew back then how long this entire thing would yeah. go on. It was just 2020. Imagine yeah. like how much happened after that. Right, yeah. Yes. Uh, so I don't think anyone was really planning that, but we might have changed it if we would have known. Uh, yeah, how much would happen, but nobody knew. So. Yeah. Of course, it was nice because it didn't get enough spotlight now. Um, but we were able to promote it online the entire time, at yeah. least. <laughs> yeah. What did you guys do to help promote it and get it out there? I mean, you guys are like a big visual band with lots of videos, and that seems mm. to be important to the aesthetic of the band. Yeah. We. Uh, yeah. First of all, we released a few music videos, um, even more than we thought would have been possible for <laughs> us and our budget and everything. But we made it work. And um, so that was the pre-promotion before it was out. And then, um, yeah, we kind of tried our best doing little things online. So we did a release a stream on Twitch and YouTube. Mm, I think we did even two, two streams. Yeah, two live streams. I started doing like TikTok and stuff like that, even though we really don't personally enjoy doing TikTok, you know, yeah. it's like, uh, but we, we, I just started getting into it and learning more about social media these past years and trying to use it as yeah, efficiently as possible. And that's mainly what we did. And I tried to promote it on my YouTube as well. Um, what else did we do? We, we pretty quickly started doing the second album. So yeah. we kind of like started a new chapter pretty quickly. You guys definitely went heavier with this record. Did you feel like because of the pandemic and that record not having escape, not having like this big push and getting to tour it, that this was a chance to reinvent your sound? Or was it just like you always wanted to go heavier? Um, it It's a little of everything. We They wanted to go heavier anyways when they mm -hmm. started out. We just We just had different songs we liked better at that time. So I also knew heavier tones already. I was already screaming when I was 14, just a little bit, not mm. never this much. And um, I remember some people who knew me, they texted me actually after Escape came out and they're like, where are your screams? Why didn't you scream? <laughs> they're like, I, we know you can scream. Where, where are they? Where, where are they? And I was like, yeah, Ray, do you want my screams? I don't know. I, I never thought about it that people might actually like them because I was never so confident about them. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it's kind of happened that we wrote angrier songs anyway, maybe because of the situation yeah. we were in and a lot of private things as well. It was just natural. So we didn't even think through much. We just, yeah, I just heard this one song. One of the first ones was actually Paradise. Mm -hmm. uh, and I heard it and I was like, this one needs screams. It just yeah. needs screams. No matter what I want, no matter what anyone wants, I hear the song and I notice right away, this would be amazing with screams on. So I just tried it. And it, I think the first demo sounded horrible. <laughs> I, I think it was horrible. But the guys were like, you know, that's cool. Let's try this. Let's do screams. And then I try to improve to see if I can actually do screams yeah. uh, in the long run. And it ended up working. And I'm happy we did. But yeah, it, was ne it wasn't really a plan of reinventing ourselves. We kind of just naturally did. Yeah. 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 That's cool. That's cool. There seems to be a lot of heavy themes, whether it be mental illness or uh climate change or just like uh toxic relationships like i mean it feels like the pandemic brought a lot of heaviness to this record lyrically hmm. yeah it is um yeah it could a few things would also be from the pandemic i think mm -hmm. um as i said I, I once said in another description that there's a note or like a tone of the pandemic in each song but it's not like a really big one. It's just like yeah. the entire vibe and mood, of course, has influenced uh, the record mm -hmm. because we were all like locked in and you had to confront yourself even more with your issues, with yourself. Yeah. You couldn't see friends. I think everyone was not enjoying this or yeah. still isn't. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, a lot of things also happened for me personally. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's I, 
it's not that long ago that this much happened to me with escape. I really just escaped these things, mm -hmm. like these toxic relationships. It was just, it just happened. And um, I also, or I always call my songs and lyrics my diary as well. So mm -hmm. they're pretty real. And um, yeah, it, it's just what was happening in my mind. It's just that these all these past things happened and I finally had some time to breathe and notice what actually happened to me and uh, that's why it's called run because i escaped the things and now i'm <laughs> running <laughs> yeah it's pretty simple when you say it like that but yeah yeah it was both it was um the aftermath of the toxic relationships and finally having some time because i'm not in there anymore to yeah. rethink about them and then plus on top of that the pandemic hitting and yeah so i was fully confronted with all of that stuff yeah! You guys uh, have been on tour, going on tour with this, with uh, and is okay. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how's the uh, live reception been to the new songs to get out there and play them finally? Uh, it's amazing. So we finished our first tour uh just a few days before we hit this tour now with ns okay which is actually continuing this friday okay. so i'm preparing i'm really hyped <laughs> really hyped and uh to me it was amazing it was totally worth all these years now of work and uh not being able to receive feedback and i we almost all cried when we had mm -hmm. our first gig because we f suddenly had fans suddenly people knew us and mm -hmm. the new songs we we really enjoy performing the new ones of course the older ones it was like oh my god they're so old now already yeah um, it's kind of sad that we kind of <laughs> skipped this entire thing but we're even more excited to play all the new ones they're really really fun and people really go crazy with them it's so nice to see yeah yeah how have shows been since returning in germany like i know here in the states like after almost two years of no shows, like every show, people are just going like crazy and like losing their shit every night. And there's <laughs> not just people like back on the wall, like, you know, posing. Yeah. It's like everybody's just like, all right, we missed this. Let's go hard. Yes. Is it the same over there? Or maybe it was always crazy over there and you didn't have people <laughs> being too cool for her. <laughs> Oh, we had so many people being too cool, especially <laughs> in Berlin, especially in Berlin. Most people are artists themselves and they're like judgy mm -hmm. and um, they, yeah, no, I think it changed in a better way. I think people enjoy each moment more and mm -hmm. they know it's not, um, they should not be taking it for granted because it could be gone so fast and so yeah. quickly. So it changed the mentality of people enjoying things and moments more. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I noticed that too. I think people are even more excited and um, they get, went crazy on so many songs and started clapping. Sorry, that was my cat, not a ghost. <laughs> 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 See, there she is. Yeah. <laughs> not haunted yet. Uh, yeah, no, but uh, yeah, they, they were, they had a really good energy and also how they talked to us afterwards. Like, your songs helped me through the pandemic. Your, um, this was my first gig after two years, my first time feeling something mm -hmm. again. That's what they said. And I was like, yes, yeah, same. I forgot I had these emotions. So it was fulfilling to connect with these people together. And the, yeah, so I think it changed uh, Yeah, compared to the other ones we had. People are so much more hyped. Yeah. That's cool. I mentioned like music videos being a big thing for your band, especially this album cycle. How much are you guys involved in like the concepts behind the videos because there's a lot of costumes and makeup and effects <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so back then for escape i did all the concepts and even directed the videos with our old videographer and for the new ones for run we had a new videographer pavel uh, from trefilm and um, yeah, he also did like things with Eminence, for example, mm -hmm. which we really adored the videos. They look amazing. Okay. Um, so we really wanted to step up as much as we could. And I wanted to have a story. So I was doing the yeah creative directing 
uh, for the first three ones, so Paradise, Flames, and um, Heads Up. That's when I had the ideas, and mm -hmm. the, our videographer slash director also added his touch with them more than for uh, older videos because he had so much more experience, and he did like he took our ideas and made a mood board, and he put them together one after one. But I, um, together with a set designer, I came up with most ideas for these three ones. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because to me, I'm always really visual. I had like these ideas right away when I listened to the songs and I was like, yeah, let's do golden. Let's do like a old Greek goddess vibe. Let's do like mm -hmm. my chemical romance inspiration yeah. and the chorus or like a funeral set. And I did some sketches. So I did the first three of as the creative concepts and yeah, it doesn't have that much story. It's more like the pictures are mm -hmm. supposed to speak for themselves. And the newer one, Defeating Gravity, which I'm not sure if you seen, yeah, saw that already. I don't know if I've watched that one yet. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's from a new videographer and uh, he directed it and he did a little more ideas on that one. I was like a little more in the back for this one. I was like, yeah, let's just do your thing for once. And mm -hmm. I, I came up with the outfits and things, but he had uh, the ideas with the balloons and so on. But yeah, the, the three ones with Pavel, though, they were mainly, I think, my concepts, yeah, with the visuals. Yeah, yeah, it seems like the the age of cool music videos is back again with like YouTube being a main source of how people listen to music, which is fun to see. Yes, it's so nice because when I was younger, I um and watched MTV back then or uh, Viva. I'm not sure if you had Viva. Maybe it's a German thing. Okay, it's yeah. a German thing. Um, so all these channels on TV that just had music videos on. Mm -hmm. Remember when you went into like a barber shop or like yeah. hairstylist, you just had these music videos playing all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love that because I loved music videos. They were so cool back then, like all these Linkin Park videos <laughs> and they were so dramatic. So I was really sad t to see how little relevant they became after years yeah and um i think yeah now with youtube TikTok, and reaction channels they kind of have a point again which i'm happy i'm in this time right now because i love music videos i think they're so they can just really change a song because i have so many songs that i only remember with the video together mm -hmm. um and it would be so sad if i've never seen them i got a fever i'm so Thanks for listening to As The Story Grows. Our intro music was written and composed by Jeremy Hunt. The As The Story Grows theme is by Bob Nana. If you like what you hear, subscribe wherever you get your podcast and give us a rating and review. If you'd like to support the show financially, you can join us at patreon.com slash as the story grows. Be a part of our community and join the ongoing conversation over on Discord. If you enjoy this episode, share it on social media with your friends. Much appreciated, and thanks for listening. I'll never